So look at this over the shoulder. Stunning. Welcome back to the beautiful Lake District, guys. It is fantastic to see us all again. And today, we're at the Ennerdale Valley for Wainwright number nine, which is this bad boy here. He's called Crag Fell. We've got the rain, we've got the cloudy conditions, we've got the raindrops on the lens. That, that is exactly what we love. That's what we long for. Um, so after my last Wainwright, I fancy some, uh, some more of the grand vistas that are, you know, they're around in the Lake District, just because it was a little bit underwhelming. So a bit of a pick me up, you know? Now, this is the remotest valley in the Lake District National Park, probably the least visited lake, Ennerdale Water here. I myself certainly haven't been here many times, so I'm looking forward to it on many a level today. Um, there's a little crag, you might be able to see it here, just to the left-hand side of Cragfell, and it's called Angler's Crag, and Mr. Wainwright himself even says it'd be a good place to go with a camera. How cool is that? Um, before I start heading on up, because it's not a massive fell, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the shores of Ennerdale Water here because the views looking across the lake, as you could probably tell, are unreal. What a treat. So let's go and see what we can find. Let's crack on. <laughs> Honestly, have we got any raindrops? We got a load of raindrops on the lens. I am sorry, guys. Hopefully this is a bit of a consolation. Ah, look at it. Look how silver Ennerdale water is. And look at that sky. The contrast between that up there, dark and moody, and the rest of it over on this side. Does it really get any better than this? It doesn't for me. <laughs> like wet and moody in the Lake District. <sighs> this is spectacular. So you can see I'm set up here. Um, I've been struggling a bit with this one. I first noticed this fence that you can see down here, which, you know, you don't have to be um, an advanced landscape photographer <laughs> to understand what I was trying to do here. I wanted a bit of a leading line. I have taken a shot with the fence leading in, nice and simple, but there's something about it that I didn't really like. And I think it's because, see how abruptly it just finishes there. It's like the fence would lead in and then it just stops. Whereas I say, I'd say if the water levels were a bit higher, and um, the fence would actually just fall into the lake and disappear into Ennerdale water, which I'd like, you know. Whereas, yeah, here it feels like there's a bit of a disconnect between the subjects, but I'll show you it anyway. Tell me what you think. This is the shot. This is the shot. I was playing around a little bit and I thought, you know what? Let's just see if I can keep it simple. And what I meant by that simple is just basically no foreground. You know, I've got a little bit of this shoreline here, a few of the rocks, um, a few of the ripples, or where the water is rippling, if that's a word, um, because I've done a long exposure, so you don't really see the ripples. But yeah, that's what worked. Nice and simple. And what is making this photograph, if it's not obvious already, is just that. Look, look at that. Looking back towards Pillar off there in the background. And I don't know if you can see, but around there, there's all this low cloud just lingering on the fells, and it is stunning. We're getting some beautiful black and white contrast. Um, so what I've done is... I'll tell you what, actually, I've taken two shots, one at a normal exposure, 1 50th of a second, and then an image with the 10-stop Nissi ND filter on the front at a 20-second long exposure, just to smooth out the lake. They both look class, but I think I just about prefer the long exposure. Gives it a little bit of extra something, you know. But I'll probably put them both up, and um, you decide. Tell me which one you prefer, the shorter exposure, or the longer exposure. Absolutely class. Um, right, I need to start making my way up this fell.
doesn't even look real. It's that gorgeous. So we're up on Angler's Crag. And Wainwright says, you get a decent view from Angler's Crag. I mean, it's not bad, is it? It isn't bad. What a treat. First week of May. Snow up on the fells. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's more than dusting. That's, the fells are a top with medium snow. So people in Switzerland hearing that and they're thinking, mate, what are you on about? Medium snow. <laughs> no, that's a privilege. That is class. Um, so when I was taking them shots down on the on Ennerdale water, I could see off in the distance that there was a little bit of snow. On my drive here, I could see like Connison Old Man when I went across Corny Fell was... Um, had a bit of a dusting of snow, so I felt excited. But of course, the clouds have been so low and now it's cleared up, it's opened up. What a treat, that is class. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, strictly speaking, we're gonna get this view the whole way up, so I shouldn't really worry. But you've seen how changeable the weather's been. This could be gone in 10 minutes and that might be it. This might be my only chance to capture this vista, this panorama which is what I'm doing by the way, for the whole evening. So I need to take my opportunity. So I've got the long lens on, I'm at 55 mil, so fairly wide, fairly zoomed out, but we're still gonna get that telephoto effect, you know? I'm taking five or six shots from left to right, like this, across like that, all the way across. And the main thing is, finish there. Obviously just look at where the snow is, finish there, finish about there. So on this side here, we've got the likes of high style haystacks, um, and then we come across this valley here and we've got pillar, black crag, steeple. This is unbelievable, what a treat. So yeah, the 55 mil zooming in like that is, you know, I say this all the time, it's gonna allow us um, to capture um, or, or to retain how grand that looks to my eye. If I shoot wide here, especially if I get the 11 mil out, that's all the mountains are gonna be little pins off in the background. But if I zoom right in, or you know, zoom in at 55 mil, think about that compared to 11 mil. We're bringing them mountains in to the photograph and retaining the Grand Vista. Um, we've still got a, a big chunk of Ennerdale at the bottom of the frame as well. You can see we've still got loads of it down here. There's not a breath of wind. This is what dreams are made of, let me tell you. This, this is what my dreams are made of. <laughs> the clouds, look at that! <sighs> Drama galore. So I tell you what, let's do it. Let's do it real time. We're not in a rush here. ISO 100. F8 and 160th of a second. Should probably do it on the tripod, but I don't mind doing it handheld at 160th. I've got the vibration reduction turned on. You can see there, which is gonna help me, you know, 160th of a second, absolutely fine. So, can you see that? Can you see that? Look at this here, living the dream. So I'm gonna start there, there we go. Just where that snow is, like I said. Focused off in the background somewhere. Focus is the same throughout. Settings are the same throughout. We're living the dream. And it's just, what's it gonna be? Six shots. That sky is unbelievable. Simple as that. Easy peasy. Get squeezing them lemons. Oh. So, we're not too far from the top. Trust me, it's about 20 seconds walk behind you guys, but I haven't got to the, the cairn yet because I'm stopping to get a photograph here. Now, this is a subject that I've always wanted to photograph, but I've just never known how. That subject is the Isle of Man. <laughs> um, so I grew up on this kind of, when I was a kid, I grew up on this kind of Western and Southern these western and southern coasts of Cumbria and uh, I wasn't into photography when I was a kid or the outdoors or anything but I just I've always got this memory of like driving around with my family and and you can always see the Isle of Man you can always see it the point is 
it always rains here, right? So you could never see it. Every once in a while, oh, you can see the Isle of Man. You can see it on a clear day. Now it seems like I can see it all the time because I'm always out in the fells, you know. But I've never known how to photograph it. So I've always just thought, you know what, one day something might happen. This is the day. <laughs> so um, this is going to be one of those photographs. I feel like I say this quite a lot. But I feel like I take a lot of these kind of photographs where even I don't know. It's either going to be, it's either going to fail miserably, miserably or it's going to be absolutely class without blowing my own trumpet here. Goodness me. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I might be really proud of this one. Um, I've been really lucky with the conditions. And what's happened, guys, is I've got to the top, the plateau. Like I said, I'm almost at the peak. You might be able to see off in the background here, the light, there's a gap on the horizon and this light is spilling down right into Dumfries and Galloway, into the Galloway Forest Park. By the way, on a side note, this is the best view I've had of Scotland from England, <laughs> put it that way. Um, it looks beautiful. But then I looked over to where the Isle of Man is and I could just see this gap and the Isle of Man was peeking through this gap and at the top we had these dark stormy clouds. We've still got it a little bit now. And the Isle of Man was just lit up. It was glowing with this orange evening light. And I had to jump on the opportunity. So it's a pano, but it's quite a lot of shots from left to right. So I'm not sure if it's going to work. Hopefully I can get it as like a three by one crop, which I really like as panos. So I'm in writing at 300 mil um, without question straight away. <laughs> and yeah, six, seven or eight shots or something from left to right. And I've tried to get the whole of the island. I don't even know if they have. I mean, it's a big island but I've tried my best from, from my eye. And I've just got this small fell in at the bottom, which is wonderful because it kind of borders the bottom of the frame and then those dark clouds border the top. And then we've just got this strip of the Isle of Man in the middle of the image. It's really unorthodox, you know, there's no real like rule of thirds or anything like that, but oh, it looks good. You can never tell with a pano though, because it's separate shots across. You can't tell until you get it into Lightroom, but it, it looks good, it looks good. So I just focused on this fella, in, uh, sorry, I actually focused on the Isle of Man. Same way all the way across, as with any panel, I've leveled out my tripod head because I'm so zoomed in. You know the last one when I said I wasn't that bothered about using a tripod? It really helps that it was quite wide at 55 mil. Here at 300 mil, you wanna be using a tripod really and leveling it out um, so that you can get it nice and straight, nice and level. Give the post processing the best chance to stitch it all together properly when you get it home. And that's it, the settings were, I'll just get them up the same all the way across. Um, F8 ISO 100 and 1 80th of a second. And now it looks rubbish. You can still see the Isle of Man, but I'll show you now, it looks really like um, dark. You know, it's not glowing like it was before. It looked like this promised land earlier. Absolutely beautiful. So hopefully that one comes up out all right. Proper excited about that. I'm gonna get up to Cragfell because I'm intrigued about what's gonna happen with this gap in the horizon. But we'll see, this is absolutely quality. Another mega evening. We're up. We are up the top of Crag Fell. Let's touch the summit. I always, I can't come all the way up. There are nightmare these cairns. I can't come all the way up without tapping the top. <sighs> Mind you, I suppose I didn't when I went up Hallin Fell, did I? The one with that big 12 foot cairn. I didn't clamber to the top of that. Oh, this is amazing, honestly, absolutely. Oh, I can see a few more snowy fells off in the distance. Now this is interesting. Um, there's a, a load of low cloud that has covered all them snow-capped fells where I got that panoramic shot earlier. And if you remember, I said I have to get a shot now just in case it's my last opportunity. And if I hadn't got that shot, I mean, it might have been rubbish. I don't know yet. Like genuinely, it might not even be that good, that pano. But I don't know that at the minute. I'd have been absolutely gutted because, I mean, it looks like it might clear. I don't know. <sighs> Madness. Right, I'm still proper intrigued about this little gap off in the horizon um, in the clouds back towards Scotland because, I mean, it's very unlikely and I've been very, very greedy. But if the sun comes down and, you know, splashes the last bit of light on the land here, that, that'll be the ultimate kickoff. You know, the jacket will be coming off. I'll be running round 
Crag felt, you get the picture, right? Nine minutes till the sunset. Nine minutes, look at the Apple Watch by the way, you get this thing here. Oh, can I show you this? Are you gonna see that? See, it's like at the bottom. Yeah, gives you the sunset. That's fancy, isn't it? So yeah, next eight minutes, I'm just gonna wait around, see what happens with the light. Maybe get another shot back towards them snowy fells. Maybe get no shots at all and just enjoy it. Who knows? So it's one of them, it's one of them evenings. I just don't know when to stop. The conditions are unbelievable. Um, so we've just had this load of low cloud. Um, we, well, we were in it. Like we were covered in it for about uh, five or 10 minutes. And um, I knew it was gonna go because I've seen what the clouds have been doing all evening. But what I've been doing, I've had the long lens on. I have took a wide shot as well, which I'll show you, which is nice. You know, we've got Ennardale water at the bottom left of the frame. Um, but yeah, then I stuck the long lens on. And what we were getting was as the, the clouds started to break up, um, we were getting like these little teasing views over through the cloud um, to the likes of Pillar and High Style and those snow-topped fells, you know. So I've got one or two real abstract photographs zoomed in at, I mean, it's been varying, only about 70 mil, you know. So it's not like I'm really zoomed into one of the peaks, but what it's been giving us, right, and this is something I suppose you don't really get too often, you know, the conditions have to be really specific, especially somewhere like the Lake District, um, where, where we haven't got much height but it gives a real sense of alt altitude because you get the clouds like underneath the fell and then obviously all them stormy clouds above them as well, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, it's not, not the sort of conditions that you get every day. Nothing happened with the light, by the way, that was inevitable. It might have happened if I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh. So this one feels quite similar to when I went up Grey Friar in terms of the conditions. I feel like they've lent themselves so well to landscape photography. So again, I haven't seen any of the photographs yet. You guys have, you're gonna see these ones now. But I feel like they're gonna be quite good. Definitely a lot of variety going on, but it feels like it's been a fantastic photography trip as well as just the hike. Crag fell, man. It's, it's up there. It's up there. I don't wanna get into the habit of rating every single fell that I go up, but this has been absolutely quality. But again, is it the conditions? Is it the conditions? Oh! Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, hope you like this one. It's been another good one. And uh, what, a, what, a, what a section of the Lake District this is. And I can't wait to come back here and do some more Wayne Wrights. There are a few round here. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you like these last few photographs. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out! Mm -hmm.